Uh, I'm going to present uh, this paper, uh, but this is a very technical paper. So most of you are not so much familiar with uh, this kind of stuff. So I'm a, a, a little bit far away from my paper. And uh, after that, I'm coming back to my, uh, my paper and what does this paper mean? Uh, I'd like to you know, clarify. Okay, so I think the first <coughs> this one <laughs> the the roots we try to find out the roots of our modern growth theories. Okay, the modern growth theories start from uh, two roots. That's quite interesting. That's uh, that's uh, start from these two guys. The one is John von uh, uh, John von Neumann. The other one is Frank Ramsey. Yeah, Frank Ramsey is very famous because now is uh, in 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 gross. Uh, you you maybe learn gross theory as a part of macroeconomics. Just only one part, and you always you know heard about the Ramsey model, Ramsey model. But his original model is very different from <laughs> what you learned actually. Okay, that's actually uh, the modified Ramsey model. You can maybe see soon. Right. Okay, so we go to first this root A. Okay, so we have actually two different, very different roots. Uh, so modern growth theory start, started from two different, completely different two roots. Okay, so first let's go to root A. It's John von Neumann's model, this one. Very, <laughs> you young people have never seen this kind of model before. But uh, my age, uh, that uh, I was going to uh, uh, the, the graduate school in the 70s or 80s, uh, this type of model should be learned uh, in, in graduate level. Okay. So this is a von Neumann model. Uh, the 1937 he presented, but uh, that's very complicated. Uh, he presented, of course, very general, you know, I, I mean, form. But uh, here, very easy is to use, you know, examples. This example is made by uh, Kemeny, Snell, and Thompson. Uh, they, their famous textbook, 1966, very old one, anyway. But uh, so this. Fundamental model very different from the recent growth theory models. Okay, in recent growth theory models, they use so-called production functions based on. But this model, no. They're going to start from production processes. Okay, processes. So, so the, the, the production function is kind of empty box. If you put labor and capital, then something, you know, comes out. So inside the empathy, <laughs> you know, F, K, L, what does it mean? F of K, L, what does it mean? Okay? But this has very meaningful. So let's say the, the chicken farm. So we have two uh, processes. One is egg laying processes. The other one, incubation processes. This consists of two processes. Okay? And the beginning of period, there's one Chicken is is uh, 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 this is starting point. So two chickens actually, okay, and two chickens and one chicken is uh, you know that's, uh, take care of four eggs for hatching. Okay. So two chickens uh, split into two processes. One chicken is Egg laying process, the other chicken is incubation process. Okay? Then, at the end of period, we have this kind of uh, output uh, metric, so called. So, one chicken is uh, hatches, uh, I, 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 I'm sorry, raise the 12 eggs. Okay? And uh, now is I think this four four eggs with hatches. 
So four chickens, so four, four chicken plus one, so five chickens. Okay? Then repeating this kind of process. Very, very different <laughs> from, you know, production, uh, you know, function type of argument. Okay? So this is repeating. So now is the, we, so then for Neumann, the calculate, so, so we need some kind of this kind of so-called intensity. Intensity of product processes, in this case, is the half, half and a half. So like this, so uh, uh, the beginning of the next field, we, we have six chickens, one plus one, so next field, so six chickens. So now intensity is half, so three chickens with, is, is, with, with join this egg-laying processes, and remaining three with join incubation processes. Okay? So then repeating this one. Then they consider that uh, uh, the ex so, so, so chicken would be, you know, the, the inc increases, you know, every period. Okay? <coughs> then uh, the von Neumann prove that uh, there exists some maximum uh, some expansion rate or maybe a growth rate in a sense. That's alpha, and it's uh, repeating the same process forever. Okay. So, so this kind of model is is is, is very. I mean, uh, now it's not so much familiar <laughs> with you know that's uh, yes. What you mean is that this kind of growth process cannot be modelized in a standard framework, dynamic framework with a standard production functions, for example, cannot a two okay, we can, model? We can. Ah, we can, can. Yeah, yeah, okay. we can okay. construct based on this one. Okay. Okay. Then that black box, never be black box anymore. So yeah, so that's my uh, proposal. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. And so in what <laughs> sense, in what sense is it a different route then from the standard uh, Ramsey yeah. framework, let's say. Yeah, yeah, but, but the people only start from, you know, production functions. Mm -hmm. You know, most of growth theorists. Mm -hmm. So why not go back to uh, this kind of, you know, to the process, process? Yeah. So, thanks. That's uh, fascinating. Uh, I was not aware of this. And uh, one question is uh, related to the previous one. Uh, we know the parametric approach to growth now, only this approach with production functions. Mm -hmm. And um, is there literature that has been developing about non-parametric approaches to growth? Uh, what do you mean by... Parametric without production functions, inspired of this kind of works that you're presenting. No, uh, I'm, uh, now I think, uh, as Mungra, I think, uh, now it's advocating, why not, you know, start from uh, this kind of, you know, some processes, think about the process. Uh, because now is, I think uh, this kind of, uh, I think, model is very important. For example, that's five years ago, I guess, that uh, Oxford professor uh, reported uh, some, I think, uh, you know, fat AI, you know, revolution affect to the, you know, the jobs. The job is actually, this is, uh, this process is actually. And accountant would disappear in, in maybe 25 years or so something like that. So accounting process. Uh, so we can consider the accounting process, then that's maybe, uh, uh, that's that element should be turned to be zero or something like that. So, so, so maybe we can um, capture such kind of phenomenon by using, based on this kind of, you know, processing processes, okay? Not, you know, not stuff from, you know, processing functions. It's very hard to capture such kind of things, you know. That's my suggestion. So, so maybe young, maybe uh, graduate students should try. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, I just then. Uh, so this is I think root B, the Ramsey model, very different. Okay, the Ramsey's original model is something like that, and uh, he's considering about this kind of utility, uh, objective. 
functions. That has a, you know, like a hill, and the hill has a top, and this is a satiation point, so the bliss point, okay? This kind of model he's seeing. So if the people consume a little bit away from this bliss point, we have so-called value loss, okay? So if you consume more, still we have some value loss, okay? So he adding up those value loss and uh, try to minimize, so, so, so optimal path should be a minimize these objective functions, okay, based on this accumulation equations. It's very different. <laughs> okay. Standard way, you know, we call it Lamitz model, Lamitz model, Lamitz only the model like this, okay. So, 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 so this, this, this approach is so-called value loss approach, and this approach is very useful. Later, we use in improving some turnpike theory. We, this is very draw. But uh, this approach originally started by uh, Ramsey, actually. Okay? And very interesting is, is this one. So they were born in the same year. <laughs> What a coincidence, <laughs> what a coincidence. But uh, Ramadi passed away very early age, maybe 26. But, uh, okay. <laughs> so that's a very surprise. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's, it's okay, so that's before World War II, 1930s, okay? That's the 1930s. Then what happened in after war in the 1950s? Uh, then, so, so root A is, was very popular in 1950s, 1960s, 1960s actually. Not root B, uh, yeah. not Ramsey model. Just, you know, that's a, for Neumann model is, was very popular at the time. One reason is this one, this book, very famous, Linear Programming and Economic Analysis, 1958. That was uh, written by uh, uh, three big guys, Dorfman, Simonson, and Solo. So we call that the Dosso, okay, for, for a kind of a nickname of the book. <laughs> you know, we, every time we, you know, list up three guys, it's, 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 it's a conversation, so I, I just... So, okay, he, he, they started from this, this kind of functions, okay, to capital good case, and uh, second capital, this period of second capital is a function of the first capital, this period of uh, first capital, and the uh, capital one and capital two, in, in, in previous, cap, uh, previous period, like this kind of models, anyway. Okay. So if you give two uh, in stocks in advance, okay, this and this, then we can draw this kind of graphs. Okay. We can uh, there's some, some relation between K2 and K1. So we can draw this kind of graph. Then if you give some other uh, values, assign some other values to these two uh, variables, then you can draw this kind of diagram. Then you can repeat that one as many as time. Then we can finally draw this kind of envelope curves. They call that uh, 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 expand, exp, uh, production possibility frontier, expanding f f production possible frontiers. The similar thing is you can do it like this and like this. Okay? This kind of model. So this one is you know, expanding for, forever. <laughs> okay? Then Dauphin does so prove this one. First, 
there exists a von Neumann solution. Von Neumann, we, this kind of you know, rays. And along these lines, the expansion rate is maximum. Okay? Maximum. Then after that, they proved the second theorem. This is important. This is so-called Tampike. But, but I should say that Tampike conjectures. Uh, uh, I tell you why. <laughs> okay? So they, they consider the following things. They try, they, for, for example, Prana will, you know, now it's standing at this point, A, and targeting to B. What is the optimal, you know, the trajectory, uh, the character of, uh, you know, optimal path from A to B? Okay? So, they try to characterize the, the property of that kind of path, optimal path. Then this is, then they characterize in that way. So if it is, so the optimal should the following you know, properties. They start from A, but, at, but closer to von Neumann ray and stay there as long as possible. And then after that, they deviate from for Neumann lay and going to the target point. Okay? So this is called the Tronfeig property. Okay? So the why, why this is called Tronfeig, I think this is the Dostos, you know, naming. Because I think in, in, in Boston, uh, you know, that's an expressway actually, but uh, they, they call that, uh, you know, Massachusetts Tronfeig or something that they call that. So, they use this, this is kind of you know, speedway, I mean the highway. So they call that the Tomfax, uh, or Tomfax property, something like that. That's uh, uh, their name. But the problem is this one. They made a mistake. <laughs> you know, those big guys, even those big guys, you know, fail to, you know, uh, miscalculations. <laughs> They lost one very important cross-section partial derivatives. And that was found by uh, three Japanese, uh, no, four Japanese economists uh, through a translation, you know. They, they tried to translate this famous book into Japanese, and uh, they checked, you know, every process, and they found that, oh, Jesus Christ, this guy has lost one important term. And that's undetermined point. <laughs> you know, that uh, the sign is not determined. So that's a big problem. <laughs> and uh, of course, you can maybe uh, ad hoc, you know, some assumptions to that sign, then, then this may be whole. But, but uh, so, as I write down, that, that, that's only conjectures at the time. Okay? Maybe that's hold. Then uh, we we have another big guy here shows up, John Hicks, Jerry Hicks. Hicks doubt about the Tampak, you know, probably he, he, he read actually Dosso, and he was wondering that uh, this kind of thing never happened or such kind of thing. So he visited three places, three places to learn or, or to, to maybe discuss about his, his program. One place is Rochester, that's a, Mackenzie was there. And second place is Berkeley, that's a, Randa was there. And third place is Japan, that's Osaka University, that's Morishima was there. <laughs> he visited three, uh, three places to talk about the you know, possibility of a turnback theory, okay? Then, um, after this visit, he realized that, yes, I, I now is the, he, 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 he believed in the turnback property, and he wrote the very strange paper, <laughs> very strange paper, that's, a, that's a, in the price, prices and turnback story over Murray's Nest, 1961, early start, 
It's, it's, it's a very, very, very strange paper, but, but the big guy can publish such kind of papers <laughs> in the, such a good journals. <laughs> if you write this kind of paper and uh, maybe send that to Econometrica, you'll never be published. <laughs> Only big guys, <laughs> maybe Nobel, <laughs> the Nobel Prize guys can, okay? And I, I, the Morishima you know, told me a very, very, very interesting, interesting story about John, John, when John Hicks, there he visited Berkeley. Of course, he, he was so famous, so he was invited, of course, to a seminar like this. Then he, you know, got into the seminar room, uh, went into the seminar room, he saw uh, some person in the front row. That was King Arrow. <laughs> King Arrow was sitting just over there, and he, he, he presented his paper. The next day, he was invited to Stanford, right? <laughs> then uh, for, for seminar. Then he went to the seminar room at Stanford. Then he saw the same guys over there <laughs> in the front row. That's the King Arrow was there. <laughs> and he talked the same, same topics. <laughs> so, so, so he was so busy at the time, so he only brought only one topic with him for seminar. So, that's, uh, Jerry Fix was so ashamed <laughs> of that one, that kind of story he told to Morishima. Yeah, <laughs> that's a quite story, I think. Then, this is kind of, I think, initial, uh, uh, so finally, I think this, these three guys, of course, these three guys, I think that uh, John Hicks was visited, met, these three guys, and three guys uh, proved term theory formally, actually, but separate, in, in separate models. The one is Radna, uh, and the uh, second is, is, is Morishima, and uh, Leontjev von Neumann does hybrid models, and Mackenzie is proved in uh, dynamical Leontjev models. There, uh, and uh, that tampa is a little bit different from, uh, I think, uh, recent one. This is like this. It's called the visit tampa theorem. For any epsilon neighborhood, the period during which the optimal paths deviate from the epsilon neighborhood, like this, deviate from here, does not exceed the upper bound period, you know, the n, that n. And it depends on the epsilon. That's uh, the size of uh, neighborhood. Okay, so we call this visit temperature. So, so optimal path would be, uh, you know, going out and back, out and back, out. But uh, this total period will never be exceed n. Okay, this kind of. Problem. And uh, Mackenzie extend uh, the time factor more, uh, uh, so-called uh, the existence of von Neumann facet case. It's kind of flat. So von Neumann ray is not a ray, but a kind of plane. So that case is uh, uh, the proof is a little bit more uh, difficult because no value loss occurs. I said, on this plane, so it will become a little bit difficult. And uh, secondly, the concept of facet becomes very important when you apply tampax theory to a more, more concrete, uh, I think that's a neoclassical production functions case, uh, the, the model which is based on neoclassical production function case. So, I, I, I explain this later. Now, <laughs> I was really surprised. In the last 30 years, I never heard about the Tumpak <laughs> in economics field. But in 2018, I, I attended the, the, the Viennese conference. Uh, then I opened up this the program. I saw a lot of Tumpak. The, the, the I saw the terms of Tampax on here, 
wow, Jesus Christ, what happened? <laughs> so Tampa would be, uh, you know, uh, you know, getting phobia again. No, that's that's different field. That's in control theory field. The Tampa property is, is uh, I mean, actually this rediscovered actually by control theorist. Uh, that's uh, uh, this uh, this person. Brune, I guess, it's a German professor. Uh, he, he actually proved uh, tampere-like properties for controlling you know, the temperature of, 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 of a room. Okay. He, he showed you know, that's, uh, uh, mathematically. And, uh, but uh, he, he had no name of that properties. So uh, when, when he attended some conference, uh, he presented his paper. Then uh, one, maybe, it's, uh, it, 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 he, he was very lucky at the time, the, the one economist attended that conference. And that person said that the economist you know, found that kind of property for 40 or 50 years ago. <laughs> So he, he, was, he was really shocked, I think. And, the, and then he used uh, the name Tampike after that. Yeah, this is, I was shocked too, you know, that in, in different fields I, I saw this, term, the name of Tampike. So, okay. so not e economics, but in, in control theory field, I think that's uh, that was getting popular now. And this is kind of briefly, I think, uh, we have another root, of course. Uh, I forget about this root C. Uh, it's a, it, 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 it's a, you know, this is a hard doma model. It's, a, it's a, uh, the Cambridge uh, research, researchers, you know, try to, you know, make Keynesian static model to um, more, you know, dynamic models than we have this kind of, so you know this very well. And uh, their uh, conclusion is uh, so famous knife edge. So this provides, the, you know, says that the capitalism is uh, inherently unstable. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry. Then ancestors. To that, uh, you know, this claim, the Bob Solo uh, presented his models that he introduced now famous in production functions, neoclassical production functions. So labor and capital is now is a, you know substitute you know, each other. So you can do Diagram of investment, and this is the depreciation line. So if you start from here, then per capita is going up. If you start from here, the capital will be declines. So it's stable in a way. Like this, this is so famous, so I just skipped as well. So if you write, you know, this is along the timeline, we have this kind of timeline we have. So we have some shocks here. Then we have new uh, steady state, per capita steady state here. But uh, no, this line is horizontal, no slopes, okay? So we can evaluate this, this property it, by so realities. So let's, sorry, this, that's, uh, so this is a uh, uh, Japanese growth process, uh, maybe 100 years. We have this kind of trend lines, okay? So this graph is very different from uh, the solos. Original solos in the timeline diagrams, so very different from you know realities. So solo now is introduced. 
Okay, so Solo now introduced the so-called the technical progress. Okay, as you know, that's this kind of thing. Then, I'm sorry. then we have this kind of new timelines. This is rate of time uh, technical progress slope to show. Okay. Now it seems to, you know, this mimic the realities. <laughs> okay. uh, that's why we explain the Japanese, you know, the growth process. So uh, it's 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 it's, uh, it's fine for. So this is a, uh, I think, Kusuro's models. And another, I think, reality is we, uh, the, the growth model show some maxim. <laughs> That's very you know, tough, tough thing. That's so-called Caldor's <laughs> fact, 1961. It's one, two, three. It's a kind of summarized one. Two more, I think it is. Okay? The, in this uh, property, the important thing is uh, this one. The share of capital and labor income in national income has also been constant, no trend, so like this, okay, no trend. But if you, you know, look at it carefully, around here, 1980s, it, it, it's, uh, this is declining. <laughs> but at that time, uh, people neglected such kind of fact. They forget about that. Still, <laughs> uh, the Caldera's fact holds, hold it, OK? So then I think that uh, the solar model is perfectly you know, satisfy all these the properties. So theory and reality is consistent. That's the reason why I think uh, in macro people is uh, believing solar models. Okay? <laughs> the consistent. That explained in the Japanese, you know, the growth process and also the, the satisfied Caldera's facts. So no, no, no complaint. <laughs> no room for complaint. Now this one, uh, like Cambrian <laughs> explosion. I, that's my name. <laughs> In uh, of economic growth theories, that's the uh, 1960s and the 1980s. Uh, okay, there are many variety of uh, the models that is is invented actually. And when I was a graduate student, uh, the, the, the growth theory was taught in different fields, as a different field. It's called capital theory, not the part of macroeconomics. This is very different, OK? In, in everywhere. Not only Rochester, but also some of the areas so -called, there exist so-called capital theory, OK? Not macro. One part of market. Okay. So that's, but now, 2000, you never heard about capital theory. <laughs> it's disappeared. <laughs> okay. So the, the, the first uh, the extension is root C, based on the Yuzawa extend uh, Soros mode to two sectors, the famous Yuzawa two sectors. And second one is more important, that the uh, endogenization of saving behaviors okay, by cats and equipments. And this is, uh, they try to integrate Ramsey model and solar models. And that turned out to be a neoclassical of the growth model. So this is now is called Ramsey models. Okay? So this is a model you, you call Ramsey models. <laughs> The, the original Ramsey model is different, okay? So, so this turned out to be a basic, basic model macro, macro growth theory. And Yuzawa also extending uh, the two sectors of the growth models. Uh, and uh, 
the first model is, of course, that the saving rate is given. No, no endogenized saving behavior. So they, they, they try to extend that one to 1964. Okay. And the uh, second one, second is introducing you know, technological progress into that kind of models. The one is, uh, is our, and uh, also is our introduce this type of uh, knowledge production function. So this is very, very familiar. Even, even now we use, <laughs> OK? And uh, this uh, R&D sector models, this is by Shell. This is we still use, <laughs> OK? And the famous one, Allo Dunning, we're doing, we still using. So at this, in this period, I think this, this kind of, uh, I think, uh, things invented, OK? It's not by uh, Roma, <laughs> these guys. And uh, so, so, so now it's a different, you know, that uh, uh, flow is, it exists. That's an integration of roots A and root B. It's done by Atumi. It's uh, also McKenzie's student. They introduced this kind of project, possibility frontiers, and uh, using Ladner's, you know, Bayros lemma, and proves the so called. Now is, now is we call that the consumption time by experience. So any optimal pass converges to the optimal balanced growth path. So this very standard in time by experience, he, he proves. So this is another one. Okay. So I, 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 I just you know, the clarify the difference between two schools, I <laughs> just say. Of course, Alan belongs to this one. <laughs> but, but most of macro people belongs to this school. Okay? If you draw uh, production possibility frontiers in, the f in macro models, that's, we can draw this kind of you know, 45 degree lines uh, you know, as a production possibility frontiers. So this means that you can transfer chocolate to machine, production machine, without any cost. Okay? One to one. But here, our model, no, our means including, you know, it's, uh, some people around here too, I guess, as a group. If you change you know, chocolate, if you transform chocolate to a machine, you need a cost. The cost would be you, you, you transfer your, your resources like this. So it's uh, non-linear, non okay? So this is very different, actually. That's, that's uh, actually Kazuo Nishimura always. But, but this is a very simple fact, but still very important, <laughs> okay? So I just try to. Then um, that, that's, that's the, the time for XO is now is, uh, uh, proved in very different models. So now is this model models. So objective function is now is, uh, uh, is today's capital and tomorrow's capital. This evaluation uh, function and it's discounted by rho. And uh, these two uh, uh, today's stock and the tomorrow's stock is belong to some technology set. Like this kind of very simplified or very simplified model. We call that the reduced form models. And Tampak was, uh, Tampak, Tampak was studied in terms of this kind of models, 1980, 1970, late 1970s, 1980s. So uh, this kind of models are a little bit uh, different from you know, so-called uh, structural models. No production functions, no utility functions, or something like that, but very simplified models. Yeah. Alan also worked in, in this model, too. <laughs> we don't, 
a long time ago. <laughs> and uh, Shankman proof this kind of turnpike, that the visit turnpike theorem and the subtle point stability and uh, integrating them and show the consumption turnpike theorems. And um, Mackenzie pr proved a similar thing, but uh, Mackenzie's case is uh, like a you know, very, very general case. That's, uh, that's include the so-called you know, facet case. They extend the turnpike into uh, the facet case. And due to that, he proved the neighborhood turnpike theorem first, then show the subtle point stability, and show the consumption turnpike theorem. So this is, I think, uh, in the 1980s. So I, I, this is my private story. <laughs> uh, uh, in my dissertation, I, I, I try to, you know, I'm oh, sorry. This model is so, you know, the abstract, so-called reduced form. So I, I, I try to show the turnpike, the, the consumption turnpike, in a very, very standard In a sector, optimal growth models. Okay, I I, I try to show show this one. Okay, this is my my dissertation, but my calculation was so complicated, so, so it's hard to publish, and uh, only one part is published. So so I actually the the paper I'm supposed to present today is uh, more I think uh, clearly explained. This part. Okay. Then uh, the problem is this one: Why facet exists when we considering, uh, you know, this standard neoclassical production functions? You know, the constant return to scale neoclassical production function. This is the simple, I, I think, explanation. If you have here, then if you you know scale down. Point uh, by you know scale down means that this is constant return, so you can scale down anyway. So, so C sector consumption sector is leave you know labor and capitals. Then, be used in Y sector. Those one, then you increase this one like, like uh, uh, expanding Y like this, then leads to. This point, we can, we have such kind of arrangement anyway. So we have kind of we, we can move. So you can maybe gamma. You can choose any number of gamma. So we can move like this here. So we have lines anyway. Thirty minutes, right? I, I, I better quick. So uh, just uh, this is, I think, a deviation. But we have another very important in the model setting is the overlap generation model, and of course, it's French people, French economists, it contribute this a lot. And uh, this, the Samuelson papers was very popular. But I, th I, I guess I think the Marimbos, I think. Uh, Paper would be treated very similar efficiency problem uh, in terms of overlapping generations models. Very very complicated the overlapping generations, I think. So, but now is I think Samuelson simpler model is very popular. And Peter Diamond and uh, uh, endogenous cycles is proved in, by uh, the Gramont. And two sector models is Odell Gela. And Alan also proved that one. And this paper is very hard to read. <laughs> so I recommend to read Alan's papers than this one. <laughs> okay. So, cool. so, so now it's, what happens, I think, uh, after that is this one. 
uh, this is 1985, uh, many young macroeconomists, undergrad, uh, is, is, is now is, uh, try to start you know, studying uh, growth theories. Okay? So, so I call that invasion by macroeconomists <laughs> to growth theory. Okay? So this is uh, Wilde's, I think, uh, paper. Look, 1985, I just finished my dissertation. This, uh, look, the, the most of uh, the macro people is work in inflation, taxation, and uh, international trade and uh, unemployment. So very, so very low. But, but now, is, I think, uh, this 2004, it, it's dominated. So, so Lucas, I think this uh, uh, the suggestions uh, is is very powerful. <laughs> it's very powerful, actually. Yeah, I know that uh, at Wallace says Barrow was there when I was graduate student. Barrow never, I think, uh, studied I think growth theory <laughs> at the time. <laughs> Barrow, but later I think he wrote you know very famous textbook in growth theory, right? <laughs> So, uh, so kind of dynamic animals, uh, the real business cycle and the DSG, this is uh, very popular now, so uh, and calculations. And also uh, uh, endogenous, so-called, yeah, this is, I think, a main part of, I think, macro growth theory. It's uh, endogenized, I think, this, um, and also human capital, such kind of uh, uh, factors. In, into the model. So, yeah, this is a very important contribution I had made. Okay. And the Roma, and Roma was, of course, this is a, is, a, is a first person. He was there when I was a graduate student. It's, uh, and uh, he, ha he had a very hard time to publish his papers, his, his, his famous paper. At that time, he already five, five years has passed. And uh, so he didn't have any papers at the time other than that. OK, so he, he had a hard time. Yeah, this is also a very funny story. He got an offer from MIT and Rochester. But he rejected MIT, and he came to R Rochester. And as a ret retrospect, he always said that I was very lucky to accept this offer from Rochester, because, because McKen, you know, McKenzie protected him a lot. Okay? His, his paper, he, once his paper was published, he became very famous. That he, he, he always told me about that. So uh, five years, five years, no papers with, without that paper, that famous paper. Five years, never be survived in, in the States, actually. But, but, but he was very lucky. So, so, so this, he contributed to things. But the second one is very important, actually. He presented, he, he, he presented the market equilibrium model when there is an external uh, economy, the Marshallian external, you know, and, and show that. That's his main contributions, OK? Not introducing, you know, you know uh, like uh, knowledge creating sectors or such kind of thing. His main contribution, I, I, I believe that. Because I think Uzawa and uh, those people already you know, did such kind of innovations. Okay? So he, he is my second, I think. But, but the second ones were more important. And that's the reason why he, 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 he got Nobel Prize. He, he was very young at that time, <laughs> 1985. This. Then uh, other end of the growth theory is like this. Uh, you, you know very well, so I just skip this one. Then uh, this one is, uh, uh, yeah, uh, the, the concept of the time you know, this uh, is, uh, is, 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 of course, itself is developed by, by uh, Kazuo Nishimura and those people, uh, very interesting, I think, uh, uh, papers showed up. But the problem is that uh, those time factors are not so 
much accepted by macro peoples. So indeed, may be a theory biased and uh, discrepancy between theory and uh, real data. So no real data which supports that kind of properties. So this is maybe uh, the reason why uh, we, they had a very hard time, I think, to uh, not influence the macro people. Okay. So I now is, uh, try to show, uh, this is, this is Tampike, uh, consumption time factory. So uh, the each, now three sectors we're considering. So each sector, uh, the optimum pathway to converge to its own, you know, optimum steady state. But the optimum steady state has us the common growth rate. So this line is, has the same slopes. Okay, this is the consumption time factory. Convert to the same uh, the balanced growth uh, path, which has a common growth rate. And actually, Mackenzie actually doubt in such kind of things like this. Uh, his uh, early lecture, uh, this type of path is virtually impossible <laughs> to be in. He, he confessed by himself. <laughs> to this kind of path. So it converts to uh, surveillance growth with common growth rate. It's, it's, it's the data never show, data never supports such kind of things. Okay, so, so at the end, uh, Mackenzie, you know, confess this kind of things. So now is, a, but now is a, we face the so-called paradigm, shift, I believe. This is what I want to say <laughs> today. Now, now look, I, I think uh, each industry is, oh, sorry. Each industry has their own balanced growth path. It's a different balanced growth path. Okay. I, we can maybe check. The trend line has uh, very different slopes. Uh, it, it looks similar, but, 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 but different slopes. So, and the second one is uh, this one. Labor share is now, is, we admit, most of the macro people admit that the labor share, macro labor share is now declining, okay? Not constant <laughs> anymore. Now we realize. So we don't care about, the, you know, the uh, cow doors fact anymore. <laughs> okay? That's a very good thing. The, and uh, several reasons. Uh, the cause of declining labor shares, we have s s s s several of these reasons. And uh, McKinsey reported uh, this kind of percent percentage of those uh, contributions. Maybe important thing is that uh, uh, this one, this is a little bit, I think, different one. Uh, faster depreciation and the superstar uh, and the consolidation or something like that. And uh, recently, Alta, uh, focusing on this property, and uh, uh, advocate, adv uh, so he advocate so-called superstar farm theories. Oops. Anyway. And uh, so under this situation, so mac macro model cannot explain, I think, uh, that kind of structure changes because the macro model means aggregated. They use aggregate, you know, GDP and the labor, uh, employment, or such. So that's not, I think, uh, proper models. So kind of multi-sector type. So the roots of A, roots A, should be 
deserves the gain. Of the non balance. So I just uh, say that of the non balance, the gross multiform model based on root A. Okay. So now is I, I, I rewrite you know, my uh, former model, circuit model in this field. But now is I is not the sector, but now is the number of firms. <laughs> okay. So, 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 any. So any, so any firms, so any can be a million and five million, it doesn't matter. But, but countable number, of course. <laughs> okay. So, and add TFP gross put here in front of this one, then we analyze this kind of models. Then, I, I just skipped that one, then my my object is try to show these kind of things. So each, so now is I AMS that three sector cases. So this sector is uh, optimal gross, uh, of the gross passwords converts to uh, optimal steady state. This line, and uh, this uh, the M sector will start from here and converts to uh, optimal steady here. But now is the slope is different, so converts to uh, to different uh, growth uh, converts to the the balanced growth path with different growth rate. That's right. So this is the purpose I try to show more, more generally case. Okay. I just skip this one. How do we solve the problem? So, so this is, I think, uh, more clearly and approved in, in the discussion papers. <laughs> okay, so very technical. So I just skip it. I just skip this. Uh, uh, I just. Oops. Oops. Just a minute. back. Okay, that, that's a, I, I mean, simple implications I, I explain here. That. So if you could uh, show that the existence theorem, there exists a unique optimal, uh, I, I mean, stationary output, we have this. Then that output is now is uh, transformed by a uh, Technical progress divided by this one. So there exists this kind of uh, optimal stationary path, and you transform that back to uh, ori original, you know, that's the variables. Then we have this kind of model. So this now is the optimal steady state is now is growing at this TFP growth rate, something like that kind. That's the firms with. Uh, so, so, so this means the, the firms with a high, higher TFP growth rate will gradually dominate other firms, naturally. Okay. So this is called between firms effect. Yes. And the implication second is this one. Uh, the firm with the highest TFP growth rate will also uh, the, the, highest, the, the highest growth rate the firm will, firm's labor share would be lower than any other firms. Okay? So if the, the higher TFE growth firm will be dominating, then labor share of that industry is going down. Something like that kind of things. So now is I think uh, this is idea. We now is uh, mentioned th this is firms number. So we, we have now n firms we're considering. So we can, yeah, we can. I, I'm going to <laughs> so, so, uh, that's arbitrarily classified this number into so say 
number zero firm is belongs to agriculture, and from one to one hundred is belongs to manufacturing uh, industry, and one hundred one to n is services, mm -hmm. like this. Then each f this is firm based. So if second uh, f f firm has the highest TFP rate, then this second uh, firm will dominate in this uh, industry, okay? And also, let's say, uh, NS firm has the highest uh, TLP among these firms, then NS firm will dominate services. That uh, with an effect. But still, we have some com comparison between, you know, three industries. If the firm two has a higher TFP rate than that of the firm number N, then this industry will dominate this industry. Right? So now, that's the kind of thing we can do that. This is the, the, the we, we the industry effect. And uh, as I told you, the TFE growth rate and the labor share is uh, negative correlations okay, in terms of the industries. Okay. So as I told you, so, so summarize, the firms with the highest, a higher TFE growth rate implies that as a lower labor share, so called the superstar firm, let's say, this uh, author, you maybe call that, the non-balanced growth implies that the superstar firm dominates the value added of its industry in the end. Okay. So maybe a simple one to just introduce in the Cobb Douglas case. Uh, this case we can assign uh, alpha i and beta, uh, kind of arbitrary numbers like that. Then we can maybe explain that kind of things, two things. Uh, that between firms effect and uh, within in the industry effect. Yeah, sure. Uh, so why would firms with a higher TFP growth be also the firms with a lower <laughs> labor share? Do, do we know what's going on here? I have no idea about what data shows. <laughs> also, we should maybe, uh, maybe that I think uh, the process, some I think uh, labor using, uh, so higher TFP mean that they are eliminating labor using processes and use more capital using processes. So it could be related to automation. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So, yeah, that's what I should, we should maybe, I, I think, uh, empirical studies. That's what I want to, to yeah. Okay, so, so now is, I think, uh, then finally you, you aggregated this one, then aggregate the labor shares going down. <laughs> okay, so, each, each, each industry is you know, labor says down, 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 and you adding up. So macro-based uh, aggregate labor says going down. So something like that, that kind of thing. Okay. Any question? This is the end of my slide. So this is very simple cool. And uh, you know, the technical part is a little bit, uh, I think, difficult. So I'd like to offer some private session if we want to know. We can maybe discuss about that one. And if you want to know, then please come in here and si sign up your name and uh, email. Then we can maybe arrange the time and locations later. Thank you very much. So yeah, we have yeah, the time yeah. for a few questions. Uh, if you can just go back to the previous slide. Uh, my question was, 
Oh, no, this one? That one, yeah. Do you really need to have a labor share that decline in the, the free type of sectors? Or no, I think this, this is... Labor share is increasing yeah. in services, for instance. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is depends on the weight. Relevant. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, maybe agriculture sector is, I think, GDP weight is very low. So even this uh, uh, labor share is going up, it doesn't matter, yes. So it's a kind of, I think, some mixing. I, I, it depends on weight of GDP, I guess. Okay. In yeah. the end, you need the kind of dominant firms that has a yeah, that's right, dominant yeah. decrease of the labor share to make yeah. the aggregate one. Exactly, two. yeah, exactly, yeah. That's right. So this, this should be maybe checked empirically, I guess. Uh, empirically. But anyway, I, 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 I emphasize again, I, the, the, process, the production processes approach would be uh, very, very useful. That we should you know, do nec as a next step <laughs> instead of using production functions. <laughs> That's my uh, suggestions to, to the graduate student. Actually, I, I had one uh, question. Um, in the models that there are N firms, and uh, I was wondering if uh, you need to prove the stability of the growth path in the case of dimension N, which uh, I believe is, uh, is not proven yet. I mean, what you suggested is like, it, at most we have achieved dim dimension three but not more than that. Oh, of course, uh, that's uh, N. N can be arbitrary, yeah, medium. Yeah, that's, that's explained in my paper. <laughs> it's a very technical paper, so I'm I just skipping such kind of things. And, yeah, maybe people will be boring, I guess. The listener would be getting boring to, to listen to such kind of you know, technical matters. But, but I, I just try to review or, you know, the history of modern economic growth. And, uh, as I told you, that Ramsey model is very different. The original Ramsey model is very different from the so-called so Ramsey model. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.